Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is July 17th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to talk about another instance of a very large algae bloom, in this case, a large cyanobacteria algae bloom that is occurring in the Gulf of Finland. And I'm also going to talk about the climate change related features of this particular event. Now, we have seen similar large blooms in Florida waterways. Uh, the Gulf of fin Finland is, of course, far removed from Florida. It's a estuary in Scandinavia, and it's linked to the Baltic Sea. And this region of the world recently has been seeing a number of instances of what is called eutrophication and relatively severe oxygen depletion and related fish kills and loss of wildlife and the creation of toxic marine environments. Now this satellite shot is of the Gulf of Finland and the Baltic Sea. And I'm going to go ahead and just zoom out to give you an idea. Now, so this is Scandinavia, and this is the Baltic Sea region and the Gulf of Finland. Now, zooming in, you'll notice some green coloration in the surface waters. And this green coloration is a signature of cyanobacteria or blue-green algae blooms. And these algae blooms, if they become very large, and in this case, they, they appear to have done so, they can rob the water of oxygen as they bloom in mass and then die off and then through the process of decay, rob the water of, of oxygen. I want to show you this, this picture of the Gulf of Finland from that has been provided by the Sentinel-B satellite and the Blue-green algae is very vis visible here in the fluorescent green coloration. Now, human-caused climate change increases the prevalence of algae blooms through a number of mechanisms. And the first mechanism is just simply through warming. Uh, algae thrives in warmer environments and so warmer waters tend to post proliferations of algae more readily. But in addition, human-caused climate change increases the intensity of rainfall events, which results in increased runoff and increased nutrient flows into rivers and streams and ultimately into estuaries and the ocean. Now, this increased runoff produces and increased nutrient flow into the into the world's waterways. And these nutrients feed microorganism blooms, and in the worst case, cyanobacteria blooms of the kind that we are seeing in the Gulf of Finland right now. Now these blooms do produce toxic water states by producing a number of biotoxins. And, and also by robbing the waters of oxygen. And so everything from fish to people who work on the waterways to animals that come in contact with the water can be negatively impacted. Now, in worst case climate change where the earth system and the oceans warm considerably, large blooms can extend far out into the ocean and cover much of the ocean's surface. And in past hothouse climates, some scientific avenues of study have indicated that the oceans themselves have been transformed into a less life-supporting state, known as a Canfield Ocean, and, and or to a, to a lesser degree, a stratified ocean. And, and these ocean states either support less life in the case of a stratified ocean. And in the, in the worst case scenario, in a Canfield ocean state become an engine for, for mass extinction. 
Now, human-caused climate change has not yet reached anywhere near a threshold that could, could produce those, the, the, the worst case scenario ocean states. However, increasing glacial melt and interruption of the ocean currents does produce a more stratified ocean in which these harmful algae blooms can proliferate. Now, particularly for the Gulf of Finland, and this is a, uh, we're going to look at a study here. So the World Wildlife Federation produced a study that investigated the effects of climate change on eutrophication in the northern Baltic Sea, which included the Gulf of Finland. And, and the study indicated that, that climate change was, was driving a, a worsening set of circumstances and, and recommended various actions to try and help mitigate the problem. But the study found that ultimately human-caused climate change factors would override any form of mitigation unless human-caused climate change was relatively mild. So, so this is something that, that we need to keep in consideration as we think about the observed proliferation of algae blooms around the world as the earth warms and the related loss of, of health and, and increased toxicity in nearby waterways. So to underline this point, in order to deal with the issue, we're going to need to limit and ultimately reduce fossil fuel burning to zero and related human-caused climate uh, change inducing emissions to carbon emissions to zero as well. So as with other features of climate change, the events that we are seeing now as it relates to algae blooms are mild in comparison to what we will tend to see in the future if human-caused climate change continues to progress and, and if we don't decide to halt emissions and instead progress along what is known as a business as usual pathway, which is a worst, worst case scenario for the global climate. Now, this particular issue is just one of many issues related to human-caused climate change, but I'd like to just call your attention to it due to the fact that we certainly have an event that is ongoing now in the Baltic Sea and the Gulf of Finland. Thank you for joining me and I will be chatting with you soon.